over the land and through mad maneuvers that loud warring beasts awaits. RMC coasters have been growing in popularity and popping up at theme parks in North America as well as overseas more recently thanks to their attractiveness and ability to deliver high levels of thrill as well as unique elements. Having over many years become one of the most praised and desired coaster types, many guests and enthusiasts always hope their local park will convert their rough wooden coaster or open plot into these modern models. So how does an RMC work? The first thing to know is there are two different types of RMC coasters being made at the moment. There is a steel hybrid conversion RMC and the wooden and often built from the ground up RMC. In the steel hybrid conversion, RMC removes traditional wooden track and ledgers from an old wooden coaster. They are then replaced by new twisted steel track and appropriate ledgers. Unlike regular steel coaster track, RMC's patented iBlox track greatly resembles that of flat wooden coaster track in that it does not have the train run on rails, but on the flat top of the track. Although made of steel, the track and ledgers weigh roughly the same as the track the structure was previously supporting, as it is mostly hollow inside. This greatly reduces the cost of adding additional support structure. A coaster's classification is defined by the makeup of the track. As mentioned, since the track is steel and contains no wood, the coaster classification is considered to be steel. In truly wooden coasters by RMC, inversions and extreme maneuvers are used, but the type still remains wooden, as RMC's wooden coasters use their patent-pending topper track and can be identified by its wooden sides. The track is considered wooden, since a majority excluding the very thin layer of steel on top and rivets on either side is wood, yielding the name topper track. That said, Topper Track uses the same profile or shape that the iBlox Track does, allowing for trains to be able to run on either Topper Track or iBlox Track. Topper Track can be identified by the C clamp shaped ledgers located on each side. These ledgers provide spot support and rigidity to the tolerances or accuracy of the track, similar to the small unattached ledgers of the iBlox Track. One small thing to note is that topper track RMCs are often built in the ground up and do not retrofit a previously existing structure with topper track. On both versions, smaller unattached ledgers are added to ensure the track does not move apart over time. Ibox track braces or ledgers connect to only the bottom of the track, while topper ledgers are also connected to the sides. In addition, track is prefabricated, greatly reducing the construction time as it increases the size of the team working on the ride. So 
why do some areas not receive any additional structure? As explained in Newton's second law, we see that the force of an object, in our case the train, is governed by force equals mass times acceleration. Orientation is not a factor, and the resulting force is not changed by orientation of the train, meaning that the force downward on the structure would be the same if the train was traveling through an inversion or just riding over a hill the same size. However, the direction of those forces may change when the ride is altered in the areas turning or flipping out of or into the inversion. For added safety, due to the now different directions of force, additional support structure may be added if the mass of the new train differs. For example, on a stall, additional support structure may be added to the beginning and end of the stall. Meanwhile, the structure, where the train is completely flipped, usually in the middle, will often receive little to no work or additional support structure. The overall design of both types of track brings rigidity and intensity to the ride as a result and reduces the need for track maintenance over tracking to practically zero. The lift hill on the Joker at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom are incorporated to a chain, making all RMC lifts nearly identical to that of traditional steel coasters. The lift uses one 460 volt, 500 kilowatt output WEG W22 True Metric 3 phase motor and a worm gearbox not only to change the angle of the axle, but to increase the torque on the chain and the weight of the train. Yeah, this is the main lift motor. So you've got basically a dog box, the main electric motor, uh, and, and There is also the option of a launch, but RMC does not manufacture LSM motors, and only one coaster has featured it to date. One unique detail of RMCs, excluding the new Texas Giant, the original RMC, and the Iron Rattler, the chain is now positioned in the middle of the track, but has been pushed slightly to the left. The anti rollback devices are located on the right side and the brake fins are located in the middle. This is due to the smaller and tighter constraints of the track and the fact that the restraint pistons are located in the middle and are enclosed by a housing that doubles as an attachment area for the brake fins. Rocky Mountain Construction claims to manufacture all other parts in-house such as trains and restraints. In the first two coasters RMC ever made, they relied on a third-party manufacturer, Burstlauer, a German-based company known for their innovative rides like the 14 inversion Smiler at Alton Towers to make their trains. The new Texas giant Iron Rattler are the only two coasters made by RMC to feature these trains. These were made uh, for us by Gerschlauer. Today, RMC's trains do not have the track of traditional steel coasters, but have wheels that ride on top and inside of the track like wooden coaster. All RMC's are custom designed with layouts suited to fit each park's needs, desires, and ultimately constraints, such as space limitations and budgetary restrictions. In terms of unique types of RMCs, as mentioned, there is only currently one LSM launch RMC in operation named Lightly Rod, located at Dollywood in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. While it is one of a kind and innovative, it has run into a list of problems greatly delaying its opening. During a conversion, the layout is often greatly altered by removing unnecessary and anticlimactic sections of the ride's course and replacing them with reversions or excessive banking. For example, Twist the Colossus at Six Flags Mansion Batman replaced the first large turnaround of the original wooden Colossus coaster with a combination of airtime hills, outward banking, and a high five element where the passengers of two trains, when correctly timed, quickly fit riders. 90 degrees on their sides and come within inches of each other, giving the illusion that riders can high-five or touch the hands of the passengers and the other train. This element was the first on the west coast and is a highlight feature of the ride. On the Joker at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom, the first turnaround in large airtime hill and the park's former Great Coasters International Coaster, Roar, was replaced by a step-up underflip and a 180-degree stall. A hill that jumped back onto the quarry wall of the original Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas, 
was replaced by a zero-g barrel roll, the first of its kind when Ivan Rattler opened in May of 2013. Like all modern roller coasters, the entire ride is monitored by sensors in the track along the course and computers within the trains that all communicate with the main ride computer that acts as the brain of the entire ride. The train is not where it is supposed to be at a certain point, or a sensor monitoring the traffic through a restricted area is triggered, the entire ride is automatically halted through a ride stop command within the computer. All of this state-of-the-art and expensive technology makes all RMCs and all roller coasters in general extremely safe despite the intense and extreme maneuvers. Overall, this revolutionary type of coaster functions by retrofitting an older coaster with new steel track or by building a brand new wooden coaster on an open plot that uses wooden track. Both are equally innovative and will provide extreme thrills and fun for years to come. I hope you've enjoyed this new format of explaining how different rides work from a technical standpoint. I wanted to create something that would combine a sense of elegance and education to captivate you and provide you with a better understanding and appreciation for how these rides work. If you would like me to explain your favorite ride, please comment below or help me decide which ride I should cover next. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to ask them below. This channel is about providing the highest quality content I can deliver, and each of these videos requires intense research and scripting, so I would greatly appreciate you telling your friends and family about us, and like, comment, and subscribe to keep these videos going. Once again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.